and what are the values for which this graph, the f of x, is less than or equal to 0. So remember that the f of x is the same thing as y. So we're looking for y values. Okay, and when, when are the y values less than or equal to 0? Well, we're of course not looking for any of the values up in this part of the graph. And I would leave out this part. We're looking for the values where they're 0 or less than. So anything we would see here or below. Now there is a little tricky part to this. Okay, you can tell that this part of the graph is less than zero, and this point right here is actually equal to zero. Y is zero at this point, so this point is going to be included. We're only taking our x values, so this is everything from negative infinity to 0 0.5. So the part that I put in red from negative infinity to 0 0.5 is less than or equal to 0 for the y. But there's another part, and it's right over here. This dot right here, this point right here, is equal to 0. y is equal to 0. And that happens at 5.5. .5. So we have an interval to the left everything from negative infinity to 0 0.5, and we also have this point of 5.5. .5. Now for interval notation, your in infinities and negative infinities always get parentheses. 0 0.5 is included, so we put a bracket. And then we have one more point of 5.5. .5. And the way that we're going to show both of these, since it's only a point, we're going to put this in some braces, and then we're going to put a union symbol in between it. Okay, so this says that your f of x is less than or equal to 0 everywhere from negative infinity to 0 0.5 and then also again at 5.5.